Got another Sony camcorder to work on. This one's a DCR TRV 340. It's a digital 8 camcorder with high 8 and 8 millimeter playback capability. This one's got a problem with the power switch and it's got a take up problem. It's shutting down on playback. So we're going to take a look at this one and uh, see what the problem is and see if we can get this one going. Check it out. So I had a, a DCR, uh, this was a DCR TRV 340 sent in. Um, complaint on it is it's got a problem with the power switch and it seems to have a take up problem. It's throwing a code for a take up error. This one was sent in by a viewer that uses it to, for his own personal use production stuff. This is one of the, the later model Sony Digital 8. Kind of like that other one, the ones that I don't like, that have the uh, cassette loading from the bottom. Another one of the dumb designs. We'll see if we can figure out what this one is. It, it very, it's, it's very likely the same type of problems that the other one had with the ribbon um, connector. Because what happens is, on here, the take-up spool sensor passes through that same ribbon uh, connector that uh, was bad in the other camera the, the up top on here I believe it's up on the top on this one so we're going to take a look at this one and see whether this one here we can do anything with it uh, he says the power switch is kind of fiddly and it might be the power switch is wearing out we might be able to clean it but I've, I've never opened one of these ones up this is a little more new uh, this would have been probably near the end of the production for uh, these camcorders I'm going to guess it's probably around 2004, 2005, somewhere in there. It's certainly newer than the Digital 8 cameras that I have. So first, I'm going to plug this into power, and uh, we'll just see what's happening with the power switch on it. Okay, so the power switch does have a problem. As you can see when I kind of press on it, it comes on. So that just might be the pin switch that's acting up there. So that, that part is probably not too serious. I'm more concerned about the throwing the error code. So let's strip this one apart first and uh, get into it. Looks like someone doesn't like their hand grip, or it fell off. It could have, it could have I guess, uh, it could have just fallen off, <laughs> broke. I don't know whether this one does, uh, whether this one does analog playback as well as digital, or whether this one's just digital only. Some of the uh, Sony cameras, some of the later Digital 8 cameras only uh, only played and recorded digitally. They didn't have analog uh, support. Remove all of the uh, arrow mark screws to open the unit up. What I'm hoping is it's not the uh, these B mechanisms. If you watched the uh, service of my uh, B mechanism Sony uh, DCR TRV1 110, uh, I had to change the chassis, which is the piece that slides up and down here, because what what happened on mine, and it was a quite a common problem on the B mechanism chassis. I think they probably had it fixed by the time this one hit the market. But on the on the early B mechanism, and that's just a that is just to hold this cover in place by the way. Just to cover it up. So you could replace the cover if it got damaged. That's where the uh, firewire and the AV output and the S video output lives on this one. But um there was a, a, a 
problem with the design of the, the actual cassette uh, housing that caused the ribbon cable to get severed and if that's the case then there's not a lot that we can do to fix that Before I actually open this thing up completely, I want to just see if it'll pull the error code, if I can get, <coughs> get it to stay on, that is. I don't see any damage to the uh, ribbon cable. This is the newer design, so it shouldn't have that issue that the older one had. I just want to observe what happens here if I can make this thing go into play. So the take-up spool is turning. and the power to shut off because the switch has got a problem. Let's see if we can get it to stay on here. For my this, this screen, I want to see the, the, the uh, on-screen menu on this thing. I can figure out where the button is. Display. There we go. Play. So this one does support eight millimeter playback. Looks like the heads are maybe dirty. The take up spool is turning. That switch is acting up. We're gonna have to take care of that. We'll just uh, we'll open this thing up and get the tape out of here. I I have a sneaking suspicion it's it's it is the uh, the ribbon connector like the other one. I think our problems are the same on this one. Just from just from the the way that it is uh, is acting. So we'll pull the front nose off this one. And. here for sure. Okay, this should come apart. There's one more screw up here. Okay, this should uh, pop apart now. We've got all the screws. Nope, oh, one more. One more elusive screw. And now 
probably should uh, pop apart Get that off the lens and plug the two connectors here this one's got a memory stick reader in it uh, the connectors that I'm concerned about are these ones on the top here this is the one that that the uh, that the switches connect to as well as the uh, the sensors for the tape rotation sensors and stuff and the head so I just want to undo these connectors and we're going to reseat them and I want to get to the power switch over on this side as well so I got to take this part off supports MPEG movie they say um, it'll record MPEG clips onto a memory stick I'm curious as to what resolution they recorded them at I'm thinking probably it's uh, it's probably something ridiculous like you know 320 by 240 or something One more. Okay, this should lift off. This whole thing should lift off the side of it. Do the viewfinder. And to undo the memory, uh, the memory card reader. And the battery terminal. This should, this should lift off. this apart. I don't want to damage this uh, this connector. There we go. Okay, this should lift off. And all the screws out. I think I got all the screws out. I think my light's going dim. I gotta recharge my light. It's almost like there's like there's another screw that's hiding in here that I've missed. Oh, there is! You gotta be kidding. They've got one more screw that's right up here. It's got an arrow on it, I can't tell. But there is, there is one more screw that's hidden right in this, right in here. And I think that's what's holding this together. But uh, yeah, they got one extra screw down here hiding. Uh, I guess the viewfinder has to come off to get that out of there. There, now this will open up. Let's see, what a stupid design that is. I take it that uh, to get to that screw, I've got to actually take 
the viewfinder off of the, the, the battery cover. Let's see if I'm right. Of course I'm right. There's the screw right there. Ah, stupid design. Yep. And then that just comes out like that. Okay, now we've got that part taken down. Now I know where that screw goes. It's a longer uh, plastic kind of screw. Now I can get into the switch part over here. This is, this is one of the problems is the switch isn't working properly. So I want to get in here and see if I can clean this switch up. And it's connected through this um, edge connector over here. So I'll undo that edge connector. And this should lift off with this bracket. comes off with the switch. There, there's the switch. Now this is the switch that I'm interested in that uh, has been giving trouble. The power switch. I just want to see if I can get some some cleaner in here to clean the switch contacts up. It's all one piece and it's all part of this flexible circuit board. This whole housing assembly was one unit, right? You bought the switch block which had that switch, the photo switch, and the start-stop switch, and the uh, the power switch is down here. And it's all one sandwiched unit. I might be able to get some cleaner into the switch just to clean. I can't take it apart because as you can see, if we get a close-up of it here, it's uh, it's 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 molded, right? It just it's the plastic is melted over. Where they basically assemble it and then they melt the plastic tabs so there's not really any way to get the switch apart other than shoot some cleaner in there and and operate it so we'll do that we'll just we'll just get some neutral and uh, put everything else out of the way so it doesn't get over spray never gonna never gonna get one of these switches I use Neutral this time, although Deox would work just as well. Uh, Neutral's got a, a solvent, alcohol-based solvent with a, a sealing oil to keep uh, oxidation off and keep the contacts from getting dry and oxidating. So we'll put the uh, unit back together, put the switch back in. Put the bracket back on and uh, see whether this thing has improved or what it was doing before.
Bill? I'll put clean on all these other contacts before I put them back together. Just gonna use some deoxid D100. Okay, that was done. Also, uh, put the view finder back together. You know what's weird? I've been having trouble with this memory card. It crashed several times. And it hasn't crashed since. Weird. Like it, like it would stop recording. Like right mid-recording would just now just jinx it. It's probably going to shut down on me. But it hasn't done it for a while. I haven't done anything to it. I ran it through my little test. It writes to... All the sectors in it and it said that it left it run overnight and it said there was no errors also showed the write speed though this this memory card is actually pretty low though um, even though it's supposed to be a high speed memory card it's certainly not what i would consider to be a, a really high speed memory card but that's beside the point okay let's um let's plug some stuff in and see whether this thing does anything more than it's been doing. So I have to put the side uh, panel on here because all of my controls here are connected through to this board which connects through on this edge connector here. So I'll plug this one in and then I should be able and plug in the viewfinder of course and then I should be able to power this thing up and see whether it, it turns on. I'm fighting with a connector that wants to go in a different way than, I, than it needs to go in. It needs to go in this way here, I think. It only plugs in one direction. If you plug it in the wrong way, it's not going to work. It shouldn't technically go in the wrong way. It should only, it should only seat the right direction. Okay. Now, let's see whether this thing will power up when I turn on the switch or whether it's still got a problem. Looks 
like it's turning on. So this should switch down to a high or high eight regular eight. It does look like it's playing. There's some tracking errors there. It could be just some disruption on the tape itself. Just let that play there through for a second. See if it's gonna play. So that's good. That's a good sign. I think I can, I think it's pretty safe to say that this unit is fixed. Again, another instance where the thing was shutting down with an error code um, take up spool. Well, the signals from the take up spool are all passed through on this, this connector here. So there's a rotation sensor that as the reel turns, it's, I think it's probably reflective on this one. So photo transistor and uh, an LED, and there's uh, stripes of reflective material. Either that or it's Hall effect. I didn't look to see. Could be either. Could be a Hall effect device, or it could be photo. They work the same way, regardless whether it's a an optical system or it's a magnetic system. You end up with a a switching signal that goes high, low, high, low as the Either the magnetic field rotates over the Hall Effect device or the alternating black and white or black and silver stripes that are painted on the on the bottom of the real hub pass over the uh, photo sensor and reflect the light. It counts these pulses and that's how it verifies that the take-up spool is actually turning. And if the take-up spool were to stop, it goes into an emergency shutdown and throws a code on the screen. And the code that was coming up on this one was uh, C C31 22. Right? That's the error code that had been coming up. Well, this one was sent in by a fellow in Ontario for a repair. So it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it looks like we got it. It's now been playing now for four minutes. I'm going to let this thing play for a while make sure that everything's good. We'll check it out with a digital eight tape on it as well and see how the digital eight tape plays. And we'll get it all put back together and I'll show you guys it working on the uh, on the big TV before I pack it up and send it back home. But another digital eight camcorder that we've uh, brought back to life and uh, can serve its owners um, many more years, hopefully, of uh, service before it wears out completely. But uh, these ones were, were, were pretty good. The only thing I don't like about the design of this one here, and I, I talked about that in the last one uh, that I worked on last week, was the stupid design of the of the the, uh, the way the tape loads from the bottom. You know, uh, I think that whoever came up with that design should be, uh, you know, strung up from a yard arm. What, a, what an asinine, stupid design. And I thought the ones that I have with the little flap that flipped open on the on the top were bad they were bad because um th with the little flap that flipped open and closed were the controls you had your, your zoom control on the top the flex cable bending back and forth all the time had a tendency to break and then you couldn't operate the unit i thought that, that was a bad design because uh you know if you got dirt the big problem with those ones was the same problem that happens here with these with these viewfinders here is you get dirt in around, among the hinge and when the flex cable is rubbing against just dirt you know grain of sand or so that gets on here and every time you open and close it it rubs eventually it breaks it and then you have problems you have to change the keypad which you can't get anymore so i thought those ones were kind of a dumb design the ones that, that had those i'm talking like the, the trv 720 and the, the, the trv uh, 110 i thought those were bad in that respect that was a that was a point of failure was that that ribbon cable and 
on the couple of ones that I have, that's where the eject button is. You, you flip the top and the eject button is, is there. So if that goes bad, you can't eject it. But if you keep the camera clean, it's, it's fine. You know, mine are fine. Um, at least you can change a tape if you're using the camera on a tripod. The design of this one is such that you've got to take the camera off the tripod and change a tape. Now, if you're using this in digital 8 mode, which is all it records, it doesn't record analog, it, it plays back analog, but it records in digital 8. So if you're recording on a digital 8 tape, you get 60 minutes. A two hour tape in digital 8 was 60 minutes. If you're recording something that's long and you're on a tripod and you need to change tapes, you're shutting the camera off, taking it off the tripod, unscrewing the tripod uh, quick or the tri tripod mount plate because most tripods it's a quick connect. You got to take that off, then you can open it up to change the tape. Then you got to put your quick connect back on and remount the camera on your tripod. That's time that's taken, especially if you're doing something that you know a, a long form recording where you've got to change tapes right in the middle of say a wedding ceremony or something. That's time wasted and fiddle farting around, making noise, changing your tapes. Whereas the other design, okay, the tape's coming to an end and there's a break, there's a break in your ceremony or something where you've got a few seconds, you flip the top up, you hit the eject button, you change your tape, you're back up and running in like 10 to 15 seconds. Whereas something like this would probably take you a minute to change the tape, if not more, depending on how much you had to fiddle around with the, uh, the tripod. Some of those tripod connectors, you had to use a coin or something to screw them in, right? Because they had a, a, a flat nut on the end that uh, you'd use a, a quarter or a dime or something to tighten them down. So yeah, that could, that could pose you know, a hassle to change the tapes. Dumb design. Anyway, this thing's now been running for you know, about, I guess about eight minutes. So it looks like it's been running eight minutes. No problem. So I think we can proceed to put this one together and then give it a final test before setting it on its way. We put the side cover on. We gotta make sure that the uh, night shot switch lines up with the little little lever there, right here. Oops! And also make sure you don't catch the wires for the the uh, the viewfinder, like I did. Gotta make sure that this is tucked up out of the way. Otherwise, you'll get it caught here. There we go. That's better. Remember, there's one screw up here. Put that screw in first. Yeah, I guess I should have put that in before I stuck the front panel on here, right? That goes under there. There. 
that goes on like that. Okay, now I can put all the rest of the screws in. Tell you this screwdriver it sure makes this work easy. It's the exact size bit required, and it's a it's not a Phillips. It's a uh, square. It's a sorry. It's a Japanese industry standard bit. It's like a Phillips, but it's a it doesn't have the uh, the same angle on the the actual uh, bit itself. So it fits the screws. Anybody that tries to do this with like a number double zero Phillips will will find that uh, it's not the same bit and it, it's, it, it, it cams out very easily whereas this one doesn't make sure put enough screws in this thing Saw a video uh, a month or so ago. Well, more, more than a month ago. Well, I guess about a month ago when it was published. It's uh, called The End. The final KFC recipe. And the guy kind of reveals the ingredients in it. But doesn't give you the recipe for obvious reasons. Because, you know, those things are protected by patents and so forth. But he did publish the... Uh, he did publish the... The, the actual ingredients and I tried it and I actually I actually made it come up with a way of doing it I'm still debating whether I should uh, whether I should share that with you guys or not at least the way that I did it It's kind of cool. The secret is not a secret anymore. And uh, what I actually made was actually better than uh, what you can get. By far, I think. A few people have tried it and have said, yeah, this is it. This is every bit as good, if, if not better, than what they have in the, uh, the restaurant. Okay, what's remaining on this? Just a couple screws, I think, for this cover, and uh, then we'll be ready to try the unit out and see what happens. I got all the screws. Uh, I think there's five more, four or five more that hold this thing in. Four more, maybe. There's one more, and it goes right there. And that's all the screws back in. Now, to test the unit, put this back together. We'll test it with a, a regular 8 tape and a, a digital 8.
Got my connection cord. See if we get any picture and sound on the TV over here. There we go. And of course, head clog. It should clear itself up. There we go. Yeah, head clog there for a sec. Tapes, right? Anyway, there it is. Playing back. Picture and sound. Let me go find a digital 8 tape. Well, I have a tape here that was uh, done in, in uh, shot on DV. I was shot on a DX, uh, DCR VX1000. I edited it on Premiere and then uh, sent to my uh, TRV110 to uh, record. So this is a full digital. I, it's got music on it, so I can't play the music because uh, I know it's got copyright music on it, so I won't be able to play that, but uh, we'll play the video off of this. This gives you an idea how good Digital 8 was, which was, of course, the exact same uh, quality that um, that Mini DV was, because it was the same the same format. So let's just swing the camera over here to the TV, and we'll see this. I'll have to turn the sound down here as soon as it starts playing. Here we go. Freeze frame at the beginning. There we go. Yeah. And I gotta probably gotta kill it at that just because. If I don't, I'm going to be a little bit of water, hot water. But anyway, there it is playing a digital 8 tape. If I bring up the thing <coughs> I can put on the display, does it show up on the camera or just on the display? I guess it just shows up on the, uh, it just shows on the viewfinder. I think I can make it display on there as well. But anyway, uh, on the viewfinder, it shows hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Right, recorded in a 16-bit digital 8 SP speed and this tape would be 30 minutes because it's a 60 minute tape so in uh, in digital 8 mode it will run for 30 minutes so I'm just going to let this tape play make sure the camera plays the tape completely and then uh, I'll say this one is uh, all done okay I've played that uh, digital 8 tape through three times now and I'm back to the regular 8mm uh, tape again there's my my shark in the water Uh, I think this one's, uh, we can, uh, I think it's pretty safe to say this one's ready to go. Hasn't thrown any codes. It's been playing perfect. And uh, time to send this one on its way. And in case you guys are curious, in uh, Digital 8, the tape moves pretty good. Twice as fast as uh, eight millimeter and high eight. As you can see, that uh, tapes trucking along there pretty good. So this 60 minute tape plays in 30. I'm gonna let this thing play a few more times before shipping it back, but uh, everything at this point looks good. It's gone through this tape now three times, and this is one of these HMPX tapes, ones that I'm, you know, are not my favorite tapes as far as it was the professional tapes. If you guys would like to see this tape, by the way, uh, let me know in the comments. I, I have to change the music. I'll have to put royalty free music or something on there. And uh, it was shot on my DCR VX1000 and then edited and dubbed over to this Digital 8 tape. You might want to take a look at this. It was at the Vancouver Public Aquarium. The aquarium is now closed. It closed last year during COVID. And it's closed indefinitely, so you, if people can't get down there to see those fish, uh, apparently they're keeping the, this. There's a skeleton staff that's there just to feed them and tend to them. But uh, yeah, they're they're not uh, not letting the public in anymore. And who knows when we're going to get back there? But if you guys want to see this tape, I can certainly make it available for you. Anyway, uh, this one's done. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.